Alright, let's check it and follow up. There might be some quest or something coming from this guy. The Archon of War lets out a long sigh as he surveys the maps and models splayed about his desk. He glances over his shoulder, making brief eye contact with you, furrows his brow, and turns back to his contemplation. The first time you proclaimed an edict, you gave the enemy a suspicious amount of time to ready themselves. I chalk it up to excessive mercy for a backwards people. But when the edict is against your kin, that order you follow to the letter. I can bow to him, may we speak for a moment? I tire of all this endless prattle. I am the Archon of War, and the Overlord has decreed battle. If you wish to help, go speak with my soldiers. Return when you have done something useful. The Archon of War pounds the haft of his maul against the ground. No interest in conversation there, nope. So, so what I need to do then is I need to do other things around camp, increase the standing with this group, and he'll be happier. And he's the, and, and this is the faction that's happier with me. Go figure. Yeah, I thought the conversation was going all right. I guess not everyone's always happy to find out. Oh, yeah, you're going to be dead in eight days if we don't fix this thing. The game can't be over that fast, can it? I feel like this has to be like Act One or something, because eight days, like, I spent like. Wow, I can press M to do that? Can I always do that? Oh, it maximizes the screen I'm on. Oh, that's interesting. I learned something on accident. Oh, cool. That makes it way easier to review text that pops up over time and stuff like that. Cool. Oh, that's super useful. Now I can keep this really tiny, because I can just press M whenever I want to zoom in on it. I love that. But I, I figure it's not that short, because when I, when I traveled, it took like eight hours to get from place to place, I think. So like eight days would be over super fast by the standards of this genre, so I assume it's not actually going to be over that fast. And that's just a, a temporary time limit. Am, are you guys happy enough to talk to me now? Well, if, isn't the, well, if it isn't the Fate Binder, Let's see, uh... You seem handy with the weapon, Lucia. Disfavored. Favor one. Hey, I got a response. Aye, and if you ever want some pointers on how to use that weapon of yours, let me know. She winks. Lucy, are you flirting with the Tunon fight with Tunon's fate binder? Relax, Marcus. There are plenty of camp slaves. If I ever need to scratch an itch, although, through the visor of her helm, you notice Lucia's eyes roving up and down your body. If you ever need someone to warm your bedroll, let me know. I sleep in my armor. Hope you don't mind. <laughs> that just sounds really unfortunate. That entire approach. I sleep in my armor. Dear Lord. And the last, the other one was, uh, have your skills uh, fared in battle against the Oathbreakers, Marcus? Every battle is a reminder of the Legion's superiority. The Oathbreakers have plenty of heart, but nothing to beat our, na our northern values and Graven Ash's love. If you ever want to enjoy that feeling, I can spare the time of day to cross iron. Okay, so that's an immediate example of increasing gravitation with a faction leading to different dialogue playing out as a result. So that was a cool sample right there. It looks like there's a lot of stuff I can do around camp now. Is this star represented? Sevius. Okay, I thought the campfire was a star for a second there, and I was going to be curious. Fate Binder Love, love uh, Guybridge, am I right? I am Sevius, commander and third generation disfavored. Specifically, I'm Sevius the Younger. Some folks can't keep track. The rank says commander, but lately I'm just organizing patrols and trying to stay out of the way. You should talk to Iron Marshal if you've something official that needs discussing. What is it you need? I overheard you asking that uh, Earthshaker where the reinforcements have gone. Is there a problem? I'm afraid so. Radix, the head of the Earthshakers, was supposed to arrive with a group of his most confident spell slingers to help break the stalemate. I don't know what's holding up their arrival, and what wor and that worries me. If you were at all inclined to lend a hand, we could use some arcane support on your on our side. I could lend a hand. Could you? So we just got the northern clearing on the world map. Interesting. I know that Tunan's agent. I uh, uh, I knew that Tunan's agent wouldn't fail in a time us in a time of need. I'll mark the last known site of our Earthshaker reinforcements on your map. Good hunting, Fade Binder. Why do you think the siege has delayed for so long? It should have been over real quick and simple. The first cohort arrived in the valley and went right for the kill. But that was before we knew the Vendrian's guard and sages and that, and, and that water witch on our side. 
The bigger problem is a Scarlet Chorus. They eagerly conscript the Vendrian Guard, but I have no proof of this. But it seems they do very little to keep a watchful eye on these drafted Tearsmen. They are often sent down on patrol, and we suspect that uh, they use the opportunity to escape back to the Vendrian Guard. I am still curious to see if we can find out whether or not that means that they actually escape back to the guard, or if that's, uh, or if that's like some trick by the uh, the voices. Every chorus conscript, conscript has a course, uh, a choice: life under Ky uh, Kairos or death under the army's boots. By all means, feel free to cut down those who choose the latter. We won't be offended. Just so we don't mistake each other. I know what I'm saying carries an implication of treachery. I'm not making a formal accusation before Tumon's agent. I'm just voicing my gut opinion on the matter. She's got a point. Uh, if, they're, if they've been conscripted into this army, which is probably going to win, and they twitch, choose to switch back to the other one, they're ki they are kind of squandering with our chance to uh, survive, basically. Although, uh, granted, they might care about their honor or even their families more, which is reasonable. The two armies haven't worked well together in years. Why do you think that is? Come on, Binder. Seems like asking why beasts stink. The disfavored are too eager to deliver Kairos' peace to the tears, while the Scarlet Chorus bring only mayhem in their wake. You can tell me the Voices of Narat has a plan, and I'll take your word for it, but the Chorus sure seems to blunder around, never moving with purpose as we do. I wonder if we've been fighting the same war, soldier. I've seen Ash yank his precious soldiers away from more battles than he's won. If you want to call that progress, be my guest. Unless we find a way to work as one, I fear that the Scarlet Chorus will step in front of the Graven Ash's strategies at every turn. As far as I'm concerned, it seems like the Voices of Narat is here to amuse himself, while the rest of us are here to do our job. Don't know if I need to hear uh, hear his person. Ah, let's do it. Tell me about yourself. Not much to tell. My father my father was Sevius the Elder. His father was Sevius the first of his name. Lead a drill master of Ash's uh, first iron, back, iron Guard. Back when they were the Bronze Guard. I was born into the Legion, and with any hope, I'll die in the Legion. The rest of you will hopefully hear about it when the storytellers immortalize me. That's rather... self-assured. You should be... Pr uh, so I, can, I can task with the Bronze Guard, say you should be proud of it. So you have your identity, sure. Uh, Bronze Guard? Well, his day and age was a century ago. They didn't have Kairos' modern luxuries like iron, so back then, uh, the Great General's inner council was known as the Bronze Guard. That's, that's, that's how time changes, because they're known as the Iron Army now, basically. Glad to see you have your own identity outside of the Legion. Failing to conceal a smile, Averse chuckles to himself. I gained wrath with the disfavored. <laughs> Ha, 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 I'm good at that, apparently. Well, she's happy. Cepheus Se coughs stoically, but says nothing. I think I'll back up a little bit. Alright, so there's missing re reinforcements to check in on. We've talked to a few people around there. Maybe Barrack will actually speak now? That we've progressed a bit? You can't make an ironclad soldier's expression. Yeah, he just stares at you. Not much going on there. Oh, maybe you, Iron Marshal Anrios? Is that that? Oh yeah, that is you. Don't just coddle the impact. Push back with your shield. Take the momentum. Iron Marshal and Aaron, Aaronios? Let's say yeah, let's say Aaronios, <laughs> or, or, or it could be Aaronios. <laughs> Iron Ma Marshal Aaronios, field commander of the disfavored, uh, pounds her fist in the air as she calls out the warriors on the training field. I said eyes in your, on your opponent's waistline. If you spend more than a glance checking his footwork, you've lost. Fade Binder, welcome to... Oh, you just gained camp for just talking to him. <laughs> welcome to our camp. The disfavored officer nods at your approach. A shame you're here to solve yet another disagreement between what should be allies. Though I trust you will, once again, judge in favor of the hardest working and the most courageous. What's he referring to this time? This is the Iron Marshal, leader of the Iron Guard, chief of Graven Ash's inner circle of trusted advisors. You first came to know the Iron Marshal during the invasion of the Bastard Tear. Unable to share the plunder of the countryside, the Scarlet Chorus and Disfavored came to you to help settle the chaos of the supply lines. Having awarded the supplies to the elite Disfavored, you helped the Iron Marshal keep her warriors fed throughout the conquest. 
How are your warriors reacting to the edict? Kairos' ultimatum has, a camp, has the camp on edge. Some with dread, but most arrive with anticipation. She points to the men spar uh, sparring in the field. We have a lot of brothers and sisters to avenge, and the warriors are eager to take out some aggression. I, for one, choose to see the edict as a blessing, for it forces the generals to act, and we're long overdue. It was mentioned you're short on warriors and need help. What's the situation? I have brigades amassing along Placid, Echo Call, and Little Tooth Crossings. The Vendrian Guard may be able to hold off, hold one bridge, but they cannot hold against a concerted three-prong attack. I have no right to give you orders, but her, war, her words falter, a short cough breaking her flow. But we all die to Kairos' edict should we fail, so I'm not about to let my pride blind me to the value of good help. This is the second major attack on the river, correct? What happened last time? Defeat in detail. We carved a bloody, uh, bloody path up to the river, but at that point everyone who charged ahead was lost. We had no chorus backup, it was just a few dishonored squads, or disfavored squads. I can't tell you exactly how they were defeated, but we lost the whole assault team. She shakes her head, letting out a sigh, a long pain sigh. We found bodies washing up on, in the river for days. It's not often the Tearsmen put up such a good fight. It certainly made us reevaluate the number we'll need to, to take this valley. Really? Are you sure our scouts didn't give you all so, uh, give you all sorts of details about the enemy and you just chose to disregard our warnings? We can pass out blame after the war, only the, only the Oathbreakers matter now. Quite right. Getting our emotions into the mix won't hasten the campaign. What's the value of taking the crossing? We can't just march from here to the Citadel with the, Ven the Vendrian Guard manning the riverbanks. Fording troops and supplies through the narrowest points of the river makes us vulnerable to attack, especially since our armor wasn't built for swimming. She points north, toward the mountain spire looming on the horizon. If we can take the river, we can clear a... a uh, we have a clear march to the Citadel, and Ascension Hall will be ours in no time. I will assist. Then our plan just might work. The Iron Marshal lifts her gauntlet close to her face, shifting her eyes from you to the uh, to the metal articulations. We are loath to work with those who do not share our training and our values, but we know that Tunan and the the adjudi adju <laughs> adjudicator selects uh, only the most capable minds for his court, and I trust you will honor us all in the field. That that word's going to come up just infrequently enough to throw me for a loop every time, isn't it? <laughs> Antonio will. The, uh, Antonio will lead the charge at Echo Call Crossing. Assisting you will be Barrack of the Stone Shields. She points to a heavily armored soldier standing sentry at the edge of the training field. Before you ask, no, the, the forge bound weren't sloshed on Dappleseed when they fitted his armor. He survived the full force of the Edict of Storms when this armor uh, and his, this armor doesn't exactly come off. Tactically, it's quite brilliant, but otherwise, it's something of a curse. Tapping her helmet twice, Arna signals, uh, signals to the hulking presence. Barrack, come meet the Fade Binder. So he's just so he his armor doesn't come off. So he was in that storm of swords and limbs we talked about before, and he's just stuck in his armor, and it's just full of mess now. Is there just swords sticking out of it now? Is he a new party member, by the way? The soldier that steps up to you better resembles an amalgamation of rusted blades and mismatched pieces of armor fused into a vaguely human shape. He reeks of sweat, feces, and whatever oil treatment keeps him flexible. Ugh. Fatebinder, the Iron Marshal has tasked me with keeping you alive, and I have no intention of disappointing her. That should be enough assurance for anyone. An honor? Likewise, good binder. The soldier heaves a heavy iron arm into a salute, his whole body clinging as he wraps his gauntlet against the twisted sheets of metal that form his breastplate. He is just a mess of- wow, yeah. He's actually covered in twisted swords. He is the human equivalent of the Game of Thrones throne. Beric, is that you under there? I had no idea you were in Vendrian's well. Fatebinder, do you know this walking anchor? Just a minute, you two know each other? No. Oh, that is to say, yes. I'm already as familiar with this ironclad halfwit as I care to be. 
She regards Barrack with a mixed look. We don't have time to trade jabs today, Verse. After the siege, you can throw as many tantrums as you please. I suggest that we remain focused on the mission. No offense to the mission, but seeing you looking like a garbage heap and reeking of a mass grave is more amusing by far. Did you forget how to don your armor, or did Grave and Ash leave you out in the rain? Beric sighs, a frustrated growl shaking his iron enclosure of a suit. What a bizarre creation. I'm sur I am surprised he can even move properly. So I can say... Oh, I, I apparently encountered him before. Okay. I encountered Barak in the Stalwart campaign. Though he appears much changed, he's an excellent soldier. You're generous to say so. I'm afraid I left the better part of myself on the killing fields of Stalwart. But it's still in my pride and honor to serve the Legion. His voice falters. You can't tell if it's hesitation or regret that stalls him. The Fatebinder will be joining us for, uh, for the push across the river. I figured an extra hand might help, and more importantly, if my worries were tr come true, and the course tries to impede the mission, we will have an observer from the court on our side. I look forward to working with you again, especially after our time in Stalwart. You defended our honor to the Scarlet Chorus, and a friend of the Legion never goes unthanked. Which one's referring to this time? When the Scarlet Chorus blamed the disfavored for a failure on the battlefield, you upheld the Iron Legion's reputation and punished the Marauding Chorus for the lack of tactics. Any choice would have challenged your imp uh, any choice would have challenged your impartiality in the army's eyes, but you stuck by your convictions. Better to work with the Honorable Binder than some Chorus children. He nods to you, his armor creaking as he bends his neck. Well, these two aren't going to get along at all, are they? I ask that Varric accompany you. Uh, there to arbitra uh, arbitrate the cooperation between his company and the Scarlet Chorus. Now we've got a call, call, call crossing on the map. Beric, you've been without a cohort since the last battle of Stalwart. It's time you gave it's time we gave you a task more worthy than hauling wagons and leading uh, training drills. She plants his her arms on her her hips and speaks in clipped official terms. Ash has assigned you the Fate Bringer's service. You're to assume this task is ongoing until we find a more permanent spot for you, which could very well mean the swiftly approaching end of the war, or when the Fate Binder dismisses you. Is that understood? Beric regards the Iron Marshal in an oppressive silence. That's an order, Beric. She shakes her head and sighs, returning her focus to you. He can be as stubborn as pulling a spire out of the earth, but he's a good soldier. I hope you don't mind the company. I'm honored to have a member of the Iron Legion at my side. Loyalty with Barrack, favor with the disfavored. It's, every time I say that sentence, it's funny to me. You've gained favor with the disfavored. It's like, oh, okay. It's a strange sentence. Excellent. I look forward to your success in the field. Two party members. I gotta fix my formation. Uh, oh, he's also listed as a two. Right, because that's people's levels. I briefly thought that was people's... Uh, I briefly thought these numbers were people's, uh, what do you call them? They're hotkeys, which is not the case. That's it. There's formations. So, a custom formation. Two melee characters up front makes most sense, I believe. Keep the ranged guy in the back. Should be helpful for not, no other way. For not stupidly running it. head first into danger and having my more vulnerable character get stomped. Look at this guy. All right. He's apparently leveled up. Is that one of these roof references here? No, there's a lot of stuff to go through here. Just, I'll slowly make my way through the tutorials. I'm trying not to completely spend all day on all of them because they uh, they show up a lot. All right, so you have unspent talent points. And we have an attribute point and so on. Level up attributes. Uh, with each uh, level, you can increase one of your character's attributes. Might, finesse, quickness, wits, vitality, and resolve. Each of these attributes provides a benefit to your character as well as increases one of their more more skills. Increasing attribute costs one point until the all, uh, attribute score reaches 19. To raise an attribute from 19 to 20 requires two points. Oh. That wasn't true before, was it? During character creation? I think I'm... No, actually, actually I think I'm thinking of other stats. Uh, yeah. So this would cost... Oh, right, up to 20. I think I just wasn't able to hit that high. Yeah. I was thinking of skills. Those are the ones where I tried to test whether or not they would go up in cost over time, and they did not. 
So, Barrick. Look at it. Oh, wow. Look at his face. Yeah, he's just a series of twisted pieces of metal sticking out everywhere. So I probably want to increase his defensive stats if I can. So right now he's got 13 Might, 13 Vitality, and 13 Resolve. So I can increase his health and defense, or his general defenses, and endurance defense. Let's go for Might this time around. That should be reasonable. Also, it makes a bunch of things change down here, right? Yeah. You put a point into Might and he suddenly gains uh, bonus points to bows and uh, two-handed weapons. Oh, they highlight. So bows, one-handed weapons, two thrown weapons, and two-handed weapons, and athletics all go up when you click on Might. That's neat. That actually highlights them in the moment so you can help keep track of this stuff. That's useful. Vitality highlights nothing because it just increases your health. But it's, it's a good taking stat. Let's go for Might for now. I'm sure I'll learn to regret it or something. And this is our first time looking at a talent tree. There are six categories of talents available to your character. Leadership, Defense, Power, a a Agility, Ranged, and Magic. With each level, you gain one point to purchase a talent from any of these categories. That's a really wide range of things to look through for uh, your main character. Looks like everyone else must be more narrow, though, because Barrack only has two things here. Within a talent tree, each tier of uh, talents unlocks based on how many talent points have been spent within that tree. To learn a talent, select its icon and then save button. Uh, each companion has their own talent trees with unique abilities. These abilities unlock in the same manner as your character's talents as you must uh, as you spend points within a companion's talent tree, further tiers of talents become available. Oh wow, yeah. Whoa. So agility, range, magic, power, Magic, power, magic, power, magic, power, magic, power. What? What? I'm sorry, what's going on with the order in which these things scroll? Leadership agility, leadership agility. Oh, it's an entire page. <laughs> I thought it was going to scroll one at a time, but it's two entire pages of three. I'm like, what am I looking at? So... Leadership, Defense, Power, Agility, Range, Magic. There we go. That makes more sense. So we started off with Heart Shot. And nothing else. Okay. Sure. So let's look our way through what Bear can do. So that he has two tiers. Punisher and Sentinel. I'm sure that's Offense and Defense, basically. So he, start he already has Striking Iron. Strike a single enemy dealing significantly increased damage if the target is engaged in Bear. So, just an attack. I can go for Art of the Blade. Uh, increases one-handed and two-handed melee weapon damage. Not bad. Uh, get a chance to attack enemies as they engage you. So just t the moment somebody starts fighting you, you get a hit off. Uh, fierce Demeanor. Barrack becomes an intimidating force on the battlefield. Enemies nearby Barrack have their resolve test reduced, just in general. Wow. Then Sentinel. Clash of Iron. Issue a mocking invitation challenging enemies to attack Barrack. So that's a taunt, which is useful for the big tanky character. That said, th this uh, this flat bonus to just being able to do damage seems like something to grab right away. I'm gonna go for Art of the Blade. That seems like an effective passive. That's probably not worth skipping on. Get our bonus damage. Cool. And so you need to put three points in to get to the next tier and so on. It tells you how many points you need to have spent by then. Cool. A lot of trees to keep track of and menus and so on. This is definitely a playthrough for patient people. So we've already visited the blacksmiths. So we know about his missing iron shipment. I think we've now visited everyone in town more or less. I should be ready to head out. I think. So let's head out the front door and pick a new location to explore. Uh... You know that awkward thing where you uh, forgot to select everybody? Yeah. <laughs> let's just go select... Yeah, they all have to make the run over. Is there a fast forward button in this game? There probably is. I'll need to find that for that kind of situation. Alright, so we can go to Echo Call Crossing in five hours, or we can go to... Northern clearing in 10 hours, and unfortunately, they don't seem to. It, ha, it involves going all the way back around. 
So, if I went to Echo Call, I'd then have to walk, go back along where I went and go back around to get there. The lo most logical place to go next is the Scarlet Chorus Camp, because it's right outside this camp. So I might as well visit that next. Otherwise, I'm just going to be losing time. And since since our time matters right now, we don't want to waste any of it. Your path is blocked by a small group of Vendrian guard. You can go no farther until you deal with them. Random encounter. I haven't had a fight in a while because of how much dialogue's in this game, so... That's one way to mix it up. Especially since I'm somewhat concerned that going to the next town might just mean... That's far enough, Fatefinder. Oh, look at that. Named character with a voice. They're either a very important enemy, or they're a party member. One of those two, really. But yet, yeah, uh, I figure the next town's gonna be a bunch of more quests and stuff, too, but this time for the... You can choose to hit, uh, help the Scarlet instead of this favorite, basically. And we probably don't have enough time for both, otherwise why have a time limit in the first place? So you're probably making a choice. A woman's voice booms from atop a nearby outcropping. Flashes of an aquamarine body paint peek out under those loose-fitting traveler's garb. And her outfit is festooned in braids and knots of sailor line. The blue body pigment, bladed staff, and complex braided attire are the traditional trappings of the School of Tides. According to Fate Binder uh, Rog Rogalus, the majority of the school fled before the coming to, to of Kairos. The remainder were la last seen during the first campaign in Vendrian's Well. The School of Tides traditionally studies the, the magic of water, and Grave Light, the art of directing the moon's arcane light into baleful, searing energy. Flanked on either side by warriors dressed in Vendrian guard regalia, the woman leans on an elaborate bladed staff, pulsing with arcane energy. A swath of blue fabric rests uh, draped over her arm. The blue symbol, uh, the blue flag is a symbol of diplomacy and truce, uh, recognized across most of the known world, and it is a custom of the, the, the tearsmen hold dear. To harm another person under the auspices of the blue flag is a grave offense in both the tears and Kairos' empire. The customary punishment is death. So they're here to parlay. In accordance with ancient customs north and south, I offer and request a delay of blade. There are matters we must discuss without fear of reprisal. The woman bows deeply, lowering her head in a practiced display of etiquette. The warriors by her remain in ready stance, their nerves clearly on edge. They probably should be. Let's see, I can, you can abide the truce. You have me at a disadvantage. Just glare at her, which is funny. You can attack her, which is rough. And even, uh... Just threaten them, basically. Uh, you have me at a disadvantage. I am Ebb, of the School of Tides. And today I speak on behalf of the Vendrian Guard. I advise caution, Fatebinder. Only thing more dangerous than a Tearsman is an educated one. Metal articulations groan as he tries to move subtly. Uh, to suddenly move his hand towards his blade. Yeah, he can't do that quietly. There's a blue flag. I expect you will honor it. As is our custom, we are ready to kill to defend our lands. But we kill only in fair battle. We don't slay our prisoners. We know this isn't Kairos's way, but we must have hope. A few of my kin have gone missing, and though they may have perished, I have to inquire on the off chance they still live. If Captain Tarkas Deimos still lives, we would negotiate for his release. One of the leaders of the attack on the entering ruins, Tarkas Deimos was subdued during the battle. In, chorus w in accordance with uh, Scarlet Chorus's request, you ordered Deimos conscripted in the chorus. So he is the guy that we chose not to have killed. So he is alive, but he's with the chorus. Let's see. I can say, I can lie to her saying she, that he's dead or that we let him go. I can admit that he's with the chorus. Feign ignorance to the name. For some reason that isn't listed as a lie, which is odd. Uh, assuming he is our prisoner, what would you offer in exchange? We would offer you five choir men that got lost on patrol. They're healthy, got other limbs too. I would not have us barter with Oathbreakers. Certainly not for anything less than disfavored lives. You say there's something worth less than a disfavored life. Call me intrigued. Fight, fight, fight. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Alright, so... They want to trade that guy for five soldiers. 
don't think that would really fly necessarily. Nope. Probably shouldn't give out information in general. There's no reason to, really. Let's see. Five soldiers just doesn't seem worth it compared to the intel that that kind of person could give in the first place, I'm sure, as a, as a valuable person. And the fact that they're willing to trade five people makes us extra suspicious, of course. I will not, ne I will not negotiate with Oathbreakers. Very good, Fatebinder. You do well not to set a standard of compromise and weakness before these southern wretches. You know the meaning of precedence in law and in war. I'm curious why this popped up. Reputation ability. You have gained enough reputation to unlock a new ability. Open the reputation UI by pressing R to see the new uh, ability available to your character. So this is a... Is it individual characters, perhaps? It's definitely not you. Oh. I'm at level 3 with Barrack already. That's probably why, then. Most factions have abilities your character can acquire as you build reputation with them. In order to acquire these abilities, you must f build enough favor or wrath with the faction. Reputation abilities are only granted to your character, not to uh, not uh, to other party members. So this is noteworthy because it's a uh, it's more of the infamous situation where you can go like you can be a good guy or a bad guy, and you unlock light side and dark side powers as a result. Uh, in a lot of games. Generally, just treating people well makes them happier with you, and that makes more stuff happen. But in this game, because ever, uh, so many, because you're more or less playing as the quote-unquote bad guys, more or less, uh, they help. They open the door to treating them anyway, being a way of getting some effect. Can I open R from here? By the way, I cannot. Didn't expect to. Then I will take no more of your time. Apologies. We will depart at once. She bows curtly, never letting her eyes leave yours before turning to leave. A moment later, the bodyguards turn to follow. Ah, we didn't get a fight. Bummer. Alright, well, R. This is the Scarlet Chorus. So I'm close to one favor, but I need... Oh, wow, you need to get way up there, huh? So three favor with Scarlet Chorus gives you Merciless. 5% hit precision on targets below health. So... Bonus against low health people. Very, very low impact passive, but it's something. It's better to have it than not have it. Visage of Terror. 45 second cooldown, AoE. It roots and terrifies people in a cone. Then you get Wrath with them. Scarlet Skin. Bonus defense against bleeding and burning. And spurting blood. Uh, two minute cooldown, do just a bunch of damage with bleeding. That makes sense. The Disfavored, which we're getting awfully close to this one. Stand together, stand tall. Uh, pulse rate per three seconds. So every three seconds there's an AoE that gives you plus one resolve for three seconds. Okay. So anyone standing near my character within three meters gets one resolve uh, st status bonus. But if they're away from me for three seconds, it goes away on pulses. Interesting. Max level is Favor of the Fate Binder. So, some person who's not you is shielded for 80 damage. That's not bad. Throw that on your tank. It actually complements my character's build, too. The idea of trying to be this ranged character that buffs people and stuff like that, hopefully. Like, that kind of thing would help. Throw, throw that on your tank. If I were to get Wrath with them, I would, uh... It looks like I can shield myself. Oh, it's passive. Once per encounter, I should get shielded for 40 damage. Oh, it happens. It triggers when you fall low on health. Nope. Then there's Sever Ashes Blood. Or Se Sever Ashes Bond. Two minute cooldown. Makes you immune to Ashes Aegis. That's very specific. Sever the bond between Grave and Ash and any disfavored in the target area, preventing them from re uh, receiving the benefits of Ashes Aegis. What is going on there? So, the, if you get Wrath of the Disfavored, you specifically get an ability that helps you fight the Disfavored. I, I guess that must mean there's opportunities to fight the Disfavored. Interesting. I like how there's, there's even a detailed breakdown of all the individual things you've done that were happy and, and, po happy and negative and stuff. We got some Wrath. We killed eight Vendorian Guard soldiers, and somehow that has increased my Wrath with the Vendorian Guard. I'm not really sure how that happened. 
Might as well look into this though, this third faction. Uh, so you get 3% hit precision and then Sun Spear. It's a line attack that does Sundering and Burning. Then the Wrath version is... Ooh. Interesting. It's a passive... Where your nearby enemies receive a penalty to accuracy. So, probably good. It'd be good for a tank, for example. And well, just anyone that's near the, that's near combat. Drain strength is an AOE that removes that removes uh, resolve, finesse, and might from your enemies. All right. Here's Barrack, though, the one we actually got. Iron Storm, combo ability. So it's only usable with him and and uh, the main character. Once per rest. There, that's where it starts coming in, huh? We already had the encounter with, uh, once per encounter, but now, now we have once per rest. So, that's kind of a big deal now, because we have time limits built in, so I have to be careful about that. Uh, swords and javelins emerge from Barrack's armor and fly into a cloud of iron above the Fate Binder. These weapons begin to rain down in a storm around the Fate Binder, damaging enemies nearby. So if I want to use that, I need the Fate Binder to be near combat and not a ranged character, unfortunately. Let's see. You need a reputation strength, a change of very major strength to unlock this tier. And there's also no apparent skill hidden away down there. I get, if I piss him off, I get Blade Graves Grasp. Powerful attack that traps nearby enemies in twisted spires of rock, petrifying them for a short time. So there's skills on both of them. Look, we're, ra we're rather even on verse right now. About halfway to either of these skills. Death from above, combo ability, once per rest with guy. Launches versus into the air, allowing her to unleash a series of well-aimed arrows into the target from above. Each of these arrows strikes true and has armor penetration. And uh, alternatively, once per rest combo ability again, uh, pro project intense flames towards Verse, which she catches on her blade and spins into an aura of wreathing flames around her. Nearby foes take burn damage from the flames while they last. So there's some cool abilities hidden around there. And of course, there's, indivi there's individual reputations with the voices of Nurat and Graven Ash as individuals. So we have the leader of the Scarlet Chorus and Disfavored here. I wonder if we'll meet the leader of the Vendrian Guard and add them to the bottom at some point. There's so many menus! <laughs> so I'm curious, what's over here? What is that? Blood Moss. Oh, just kind of some stuff to grab. Saw, saw them on the map and I was curious what I was looking at. I think that's about all we're gonna get, though. Alright, back on track. We learned about the blue flag. Only half an hour away from our next destination. Here we go. Scarlet Chorus Camp. How does this compare to the, uh... The camp of the disfavored... The guard places her hands by her belt as you approach, gripping the hilt of a blade. Past this point is chorus te uh, territory, and you don't look like someone's conscript. You sure you're in the right place? I'm always in the right place. I'm always in the right place. I love that line. The guard tenses up, locking eyes with you. That walking husk of rust. What? What's he? She? Maybe it? Doing here? I can just shove her. <laughs> I'm amused by that. Uh, he's an allied warrior in my guard. You don't make. Uh, you don't want to make an issue of this. You gained wrath of the Scarlet Course. I wonder if it would have been better at off to just shove them. <laughs> Fine, just come on in. I'm sure the Fury will gut you if you're really a problem. The, half, the guard half-heartedly waves you in as she nods to Verse. This is definitely different. There's a whole bunch of people staked. Ooh, nasty. Yep, they are stabbed straight through their bodies. That frankly just seems like it would take a lot of work. There's two prisoners here they are named, Lantry and Variakel. Fifth Eye and Death Knell. All right, let's go meet some people, make connections, get good. What is that over there? Also haven't saved in a while. Just throw one of those down periodically. What's this? A scroll sits here glowing with mystical energy. Fifth eye. 
The binder of Tunan arrives. Squealing with teenager's timber, the fifth eye's uh, voice makes your gums itch and your fingernails feel like it, it, in need of a trim. And we just finished having a bit of sport with the captives. But worry not, we'll have more fun with another batch momentarily. Dressed in the bronze-red regalia of the Crimson Spears, the fifth eye beckons you to stand close, wagging a blood-spattered glove. Now that you have issued this edict and doomed us all to die, have you come to help us climb out of this hole? Chirps of laughter emanate from under his mask. Not here to follow your every order, but we need, we all need to work together to stop this edict. But of course, you are Tunan's concubine, and not mine. I envy your long leash and hope you will grace us with your prowess. I only... I, uh, if only to set an example for the rabble. We know the Oathbreakers are focused on the Citadel beneath the Mountain Spire, but we have learned this is not o uh, their only nest. The fifth eye wags a hand in the air and a high-pitched squeal of displeasure. Given their pattern of attacks, they must have a second group maintaining camp here in our in outer valley. Unless we deal with the second group, they'll attack from behind the moment we cross the river. Let's see. The disfavored think that you can't control your horde and that many are defecting back to the Vendrian Guard. Wrong! And perhaps, he gestures at, with his spear in an arc toward the sprawling camp, it is no mean feat to herd this, this many desperate lives. For uh, every two hands of humanity, there is at least one finger that snaps from the stress of our ways. A few have been lost on the margins, I won't deny that. But if you store grain, expect some rat feces. If you lead killers, expect some desertion. So you have this large force, and for all these weeks, you've let the enemy move freely through the foot of the valley. I'm hurt. Insult my manners or, ma or maturity, but do not insinuate that I sit idle when there is blood to be shed. The Crimson Spear claps his fists together. We have dealt with countless oath Oathbringers, but one group remains at large despite our best efforts. Captain Palo's arm, uh, crew consistently evades or kills our own gangs. So you need help taking out these Oathbreakers. And, a wh and while a good old-fashioned slaughter would be an efficient solution, the smarter answer is not to kill them, but to add their strength to ours. My last group of scouts returned with a new batch of prisoners, and one of these prisoners claims she can lead us to the Vendrian Guard's secondary camp, though there are shreds of deception in her voice. I could use your help questioning this Varia Kel. Perhaps you uh, will get less screams and tears and more useful information out of her. If we knew where to ambush the Oathbreakers, we could try and take their captain and show him the wisdom of joining the chorus. Why not just ask the Archon of Secrets? I thought he could interrogate anything. An, oh, they're not happy with that. <laughs> An unintelligible mutter escapes from under the fifth eye's mask as his posture stiffens. I do not tell the voices of Narat what to do, nor do I question his motives. The Archon is a is busy plotting the efficient destruction of these Oathbreakers, and is not to be disturbed. I have known the Archon to demand personal interrogation, but it's only ever been with leaders, mages, and others of great merit. I've often imagined the interrogation process is not to be taken lightly. Perhaps it's downright exhausting for Nerat. Are a few conscripts going to change anything at this point? It seems wiser to just kill them. But... The Crimson Spear pauses, his body frozen in a shrug. But that is our way. We offer redemption even to those who have harmed us. Besides, I'm not truly interested in any of the old conscripts, but, ra but rather one specific one, their leader. Captain Pelo Florian is one of the finest warriors in the Vendrian Guard have left. It is double the injury to take from your foe while adding to your own clan. I will speak to the prisoner. I will meet you there. She's waiting with the other prisoners. Talk, uh, taking the other valley is the quest we're call talking about now. Yeah, I'll, I'll do this first. Those are the people to talk about, but I'm, let's, I'm curious about this one. The fifth eye slowly saunters around, approaching. Is he here? I guess he's here now. 
Quireman, let the Fate Binder speak with our catch of the day. Please, someone. I wish to bow before the voices of Narat. I thought all could find redemption in the chorus. A woman in the makeshift armor of the Vendrian Guard lurches toward, uh, forward in agony. Her soiled, trembling legs suggest she has been forced to stand for days. Has she? She looks like she's tied up, honestly. Is that the same thing as being forced? I guess that's being. I guess that's standing. I'm sure. I'm. I'm. I'm surprised she can tremble though. This one, he flippantly waves at the prisoner, was hollering earlier that she knows the location of the Vendrian Guard encampment, but she isn't being entirely honest. I told this thing. The prisoner turns pale a moment before a look of determination comes over her face, that I wanted a guarantee that I'd live, and be welcomed into the chorus as a captain. Then I'll talk. Otherwise, they'll just kill me once I've opened up. I'm, I was dumb enough to join the Vendrian Guard. I'm not dumb enough uh, to give away my my bargaining bronze. You claim you would disavow your people for the Scarlet Chorus. Why the change of heart? Because I want to live, and you don't need to be the Archon of Premonitions to know that the Younger Realms are gone for good. She blinks several times, catching her breath. Kairos is the be is the new strength in the tears, and I would rather stand with his with his archons than be crushed by them, which is about normal. Yeah. Why should I trust the words of an oathbreaker? I suppose I have no answer for that. Varia's eyes fall to the ground, and she swallows nervously. When I joined with the Vendrian Guard, I accepted their broken vow onto myself. Have you not felt passion for a foolish cause? One you later came to regret? Well, my surrender is sincere, and I'm willing to bow before the voices of Narat to prove it. Tell me what you know, and I can see you to your release. I heard the chorus is looking for Captain Palo Florian and his crew. I can lead you to them, but only if you release me. She turns her head, taking a long look at the skewered and smoldering corpses around her. She tugs at her restraints, but to no avail. How is she looking around at all the people around her? Because she's blindfolded. I'm probably reading into this too much, but they're talking about her trembling legs when she's tied to a post, and she's talking about looking around when she's blindfolded. <laughs> I can use athletics or subterfuge. Let's see. I could toy around with subterfuge. You're lying. Why don't you tell me what you know, what you actually know, and I'll see about saving you. Hey, more skill. Well, I... you see... Shaken by your demand, her lips move wordlessly for several seconds. So, I don't know exactly where the rest of my crew is, but I saw... I mean... I can tell you... She shakes her head, catching her breath. Search that one. She reaches up with her right leg and points with her foot. How is she doing that when she's tied up? Okay. Uh, <laughs> calling attention to a nearby pile of corpses. The tall, dark one missing most of his face. Check his left boot. He was the literate one in our crew. He had the orders. With a snap of his fingers, a pair of choirmen yank the boot off the fallen guardsman. A rolled parchment slides out of the boot and is thrust into the fifth eye's hands. He unfurls the scroll to give it a read. It's nonsense. Just a mash of words. Laughter erupts from under the mask. She said she has information. She gives us garbage. Slay this wretch for wasting our time. He, I don't think he understands what code is. He snaps his fingers at his nearby Scarlet Fury who promptly snatches a long knife from her belt. I heard her say she'd uh, swear fealty to the voices of Narat. An initiation rite would be in order. That gave me wrath. Don't you guys like to recruit everybody? Seeing as you are an expert in the subject of fate, I would ent entertain your wisdom on the matter. What, then, would you propose we do with her? Oh. So I can make her kill another prisoner with a blunt object to prove her loyalty. That's, that's, that's a rough one. Uh, send her back as an agent? <laughs> and threaten her family if she doesn't actually help us? Or work her until she's broken? These are not happy outcomes at all. <laughs> okay, so... 
if we send her in as an agent, those, it's really hard to, to figure out if we'll even keep track of and follow up on any of that. Uh, we could break her as a slave, or we could, or if if she's genuine and maybe even useful, it would be good to have her as an actual soldier. But we need, and we, I think having her kill another member of her guard would actually be a good way to prove that, which is surprisingly reasonable concept because of the fact that uh, she would presumably have to kill other members of the Vendrian Guard as she works for us anyway. Granted, they're prisoners, which is generally frowned upon, but. Uh, have you seen our team? <laughs> Point to the other two prisoners. Let's test her loyalty. Varia, kill these guardsmen with something blunt. I heard those sound effects. I think she did it then. Well. <laughs> Varia looks at the prisoners once her allies and closes her eyes as her bonds are untied. The onlookers snicker and cheer when a heavy rock is placed in her hand. Mouthing something inaudible, she lifts the rock high above her head and smashes it down on the prisoner's skull, wincing back a scream as she hoists the stone over her head a second time to finish the job on the other prisoner. The bloody rock hits the ground and Varia slumps to her knees in defeat a moment later. This is where, if you're a total dick, you could you could make a you could make a joke out of this, being like, "Holy shit, I was joking. You actually did it." <laughs> Good, good. Fifth Eye places his bloodied hand on the trembling woman's shoulder and nods to her. Welcome to the Scarlet Chorus. Do not fail us. As a pair of soldiers come to lift Varia, the Fifth Eye turns to you, his voice filled with glee. Where is a slave to clean up the uh, the awful when you need it? That make them any happier? Still tier, still not tier one. They're hard to please. Well, we'll see how her plot turns out. I assume we'll see her again. We're no closer to finding the Oathbreaker's position, now with this cryptic mess. She promised us answers, and all she gave us was gibberish. It's probably code. Uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, but I highly doubt it's gibberish. Uh, more likely, it's one of the local scripts. Oh, he's voiced. He's probably a party member. What What if making that dialogue option would have... What if that could have ended with, him, with his head being caved in? <laughs> like, that would have been a hell of a twist. Oh, he's probably going to... Yeah, he's, he's, he's almost certainly a party member. Not only does he have voice acting, and he's a prisoner, but he's a member of... What's he... Yeah, oh yeah, he's just called Lantry. That makes it pretty straightforward. He has his own reputation. But I was going to say, he's a member of the Vendrian Guard, and that's just like step one, two, three to making your party in an RPG, is to add a characters from a bunch of different backgrounds to make them all clash with each other and make the dialogue interesting. We have the two armies of our team. We need, we need a traitor on our team. And here he is. The voice comes from another prisoner tied up next to Varia. Uh, an older gentleman with the quills, ink vials, and parchment scrolls one finds on the sages of the School of Ink and Quill. Ink smudges cover his cheeks, temples, and ears. His clothes appear charred, and between the rips of the fabric you spot burn scars along his arms. Despite being emanci emaciated and tied to a, to a post, he offers a beaming smile. Who are you? Uh, I'm Sage Lantry, one of the hired quills that was coordinating missives between the Vendrian guard captains. They aren't paying me anymore and aren't coming to my rescue. So I'll decipher that parchment for you. That's what smart prisoners do, right? Uh, make themselves useful? I can try, I'll try reading it for myself just to see what I can make of it because I haven't even done that yet. You unroll the parchment and see a message of modest length written with professional, albeit hasty, penmanship. The tearsmen speak the canto just like the northerners, but they have a half dozen different ways of writing it. This particular script is unknown to you. Can you read this? Uh, well, uh, let me see. Uh, I, I, I can't... Uh, uh, oh, mm, mm hmm Uh-huh. You hold the parchment in front of the bound sage, and his eyes dart down the length of the missive. He reads the words a second time, nodding in silence. Uh, so, uh, I don't know exactly what it says, but I'm half certain that's Sage Selwyn's handwriting. I'm sure I could decipher that in a few hours' time. Uh, don't need my hands free, but uh, I think better when not tied to a post. <laughs> I know, I'm weird that way. A few hours. Either you can't, either you can read it or you cannot. What use is a sage that doesn't know his letters? 
I've heard all I need to hear. I say we have some fun with this one. Your life depends on your translating this scroll now. Uh, I would love to help. I just need some time. Uh, that's written in another sage's shorthand. I'd have to sit down with it, or uh, better yet, uh, compare it to a piece of his writing I have stashed on me somewhere. Uh, if I sat down with it while sufficiently sober, it's highly probable I'd figure it out. Sober? Since when do we share the good stuff with the prisoners? Oh, nobody shared. Right before I was taken prisoner, I imbibed several vials of reagents. I wanted to be numb and disconnected when my captors used me for carnal catharsis. It's made these last few days tied to a post uh, almost enjoyable. It can't hurt to give him a few hours. You read the edict. I don't need to tell you the sundial is working against us. This addled old bag is just trying to stall us. The voices in Narat will be upset that you squandered a source of energy and of enemy intelligence. How true. Then we shan't put him to waste. He will serve a most riveting source of amusement as we put him on trial. Fatebinder, I beseech you, be my advocate for this trial. I'm no fool, I know the Chorus uses blood, not words, to settle these matters. But you are a servant of the Archon of Justice, are you not? This is getting complicated. Okay, I can be his champion in the trial. I can take him into my custody. I can just say it's a terrible idea. Or say it's useful information if you're willing to die for a sport. Let's see. So I would say I could, the the easiest solution is just to say I'm taking him into my custody. Uh, that'd be easy, but it'd probably piss them off. So if I do the, if I be his champion, I'm doing it their way and that'd probably make them happy. I hope. Good. I like it when Tunon's puppies get their paws dirty. You gain loyalty with the verse. There we go. See? That was a good idea. Wow, actually. So I'm now I'm two-thirds of the way to getting her skill. I wouldn't mind taking a swing at some loudmouth chorus braggarts myself. Did you hear that, brothers and sisters? Raising his arms to the sky, the fifth eye roars for all nearby to hear. Trial by combat is upon us. Alright. The sage is unbound from the post, stiff legs nearly buckle as he attempts to walk, and his arms flex and flail in their new freedom. Wiping sweat and grime from his, bow his brow, the sage steps close to you with a nervous smile. Rhythmic roaring and the stomping of hundreds of feet in unison flood the, the camp. Uh, hordesmen began t to circle and swirl about, brandishing weapons and cheering. If they got this worked up to fight the enemy, I, ve I venture the war would be over by now. Begin the chant of gathering. Let the warriors know that tonight's entertainment shall will soon commence. Well, this rather escalated quickly. Fight, fight, fight. Brothers and sisters, who amongst y uh, you sets the standard for strength? Who amongst you will help winnow the weak from the strong? The fifth eye waves his hands in the air, drawing in a gathering of, uh, of chorus soldiers. How many people are we gonna fight? Oh, is he in our party? I think, I think he just joined our party as a mage. Our claimants have been assembled. Now let the trial of the Oathbringer begin. So it's four on four. Gonna go ahead and do one of these, because I haven't saved in a long time, I don't think. And so, starting our first fight in a while is a good time to do that. Okay, so... Oh, that's the skill they're activating right now. So you're just they're all other oh, there's a Scarlet Fury. So three horde members and one Scarlet Fury. So he she's the biggest threat, more or less. Alright. Things get complicated here, huh? Oh. Lantry's also leveled up. I should probably do something about that. So he's got two points to spend. Maybe put a few points into into magic and affliction defense. Wits is also not a bad idea. 
That'd help him with his magic. Resolve would help him with his resistances. This is uh, deflection and accuracy. Let's put a couple points into wits. There we go. Lantry. So we, just like that, we have a full set of party members. Okay, two points to spend, three trees to look at. Uh, he starts off with Quill Strike. Uh, he already has Quill Strike. He throws a well aimed Quill at his target, interrupting them. What is a Quill? He must have. Yeah, I guess he attacks with Quills. Odd. So he must benefit from accuracy then. He also has Renewal. Lantry restores the party's weapons and armor to pristine condition, increasing the damage from weapons and protection from armor. So he just makes everyone's gear better. Interesting. His, the, the other tree he has is Sage. Lantry strikes his target, interrupting them and lowering their non-physical armor. If used in stealth, this attack will paralyze the target. So I can get Penetrating Throw. Improves Lantry's thrown weapon attack range and adds armor penetration to his thrown weapon attacks. Or do rapid attacks. Rapidly attacks his target with a series of thrown quill strikes. Subtle throw. He gets a bonus damage while stealthed. So he's got a so he's surprisingly he's like a he's like a a ranged stealth thrown weapon character. Does he even have spells? He's got lore master. Frozen stance. So he doesn't really have spells on here. Although I think you just craft spells from scratch, really. So I guess that's a completely different thing. Oh, you can get him gifted healer. Improves his control life skill. What what exactly does he specialize in, though? So as of right now, his biggest specialties are magic staff, thrown weapons, control life. So he is he is heavy on control life. Okay. I need to find out where his spells are. Are they down here at all? Nope. Edict of, Edict of Execution, plus one resolve because of the, just the knowledge about what's going on. And apparently gets plus ten control life from his weapon. This quill? Oh, look at that. That's just a straight up feather that he fights with. Of course it is. Of course it is. Sure. <laughs> Let's look for spells. He's got Restoring Touch, and he's got Titan's Touch, just like I do. So, Restoring Touch, uh, 26% health gets healed. Okay, that's cool. So he has a relatively powerful healing spell that he can trigger at a given moment. The Sigil of Vigor. Enhancing their mind with greater power. Vigor can be highly addictive to weaker minds. I wonder if I should be going for that kind of skill. Let's not make try to make spells, spells right now, this is a bad time. It is weird that he's basically just a duplicate of my character in some ways, though. That caught me by surprise. Let's see. The one thing he has that I don't, though, is definitely his healing ability. So I think I'm going to improve that also. Let's see. Greater Renewal. Empowers his Renewal ability, granting an even greater increase to weapon and armor. Improves Control Vigor. Let's go for Gifted Healer. We now have one healer on the party. And I kind of like the idea of Quill Flurry, rapid, repeated strikes. Although Penetrating Throw is a nice passive. I'll give him Quill, th uh, quill Flurry. It'll be interesting to see how this uh, party dynamic works out. This is getting to be a long episode. It's fine. It's fine. It's going to be a long game anyway. Okay, so our party's all here. Formation's a little iffy. Let's get you in. Let's get you in there. You get you attacking. I also want you attacking. Those will be frontliners. Uh, of the main character attacking you. Let's see, I do F one through. Yeah. You have all these nice F buttons to cycle through to keep track of these skills. So I can actually start off with touches here. So. But if I do Titan Touch here, start off with Titan Touch on you, then Quill Flurry on this character. You can probably wait there. Quill Strike's also pretty useful. There we go. Get back to Guy Love Bridge, who will do Titan Touch on her, so that everyone's getting their, their upgrades in a row. I do have a bunch of special abilities I can go with. There's so many of these now. 
Let's go for heart shot on the secondary target. I'm just realizing that I can kind of queue up a bunch of moves, so I might as well do that right now. Let's see here. Let's start with, uh... This is a range attack, isn't it? I'll start with Skewer. And I think I'll actually stop there with hit with her. So let's, we, have actually, we actually haven't looked at his skills yet. So he has Striking Iron. Uh, bonus damage if your enemy is targeting you. And then you have Iron Tolling. Once per... Oh, that's the ability I can do once per, per battle. I also have Iron Storm. So I will start off with... You'll start off with attacking this target. Then you'll follow up by using Striking Iron. Hopefully that'll lead to a cue to move where you get their attention, and then once you have their attention, they will then follow up by getting the bonus damage. Let's see how this turns out. I'm not here to make <laughs> they got chaotic kind of fast, didn't it? They're not really interested in attacking who I want them to attack right now, which is unfortunate. Let's see, how are they doing on health right now? Barely injured, barely injured. Not really what I was hoping for. Sure. So we're engaged in melee. I might as well reciprocate then. Go for the heart shot on this target. Extraordinary defense. That's just not working at all. So it missed. They missed me. I missed them. Does that really make... So I'm not likely to hurt this person, apparently. Quicken. Lantry quickly heals the Fate uh, Binder with the surge of restorative energy. The burst of energy is so invigorating, the Fate Binder is also hastened for a lasting duration. So that's my combo ability that I have that I have with him. This is, these attacks just show up everywhere, don't they? Well, if I'm going to be covered in enemies, I might as well use Iron Storm. That's, that should be fun. That's the hilariously exaggerated attack I can do. Since my, since my other attacks aren't helping out. Here it comes. There's a mess. Did that hurt everybody? Or... Barrack grazes. No, Barrack's just hitting hordes, so it doesn't seem to hit enemies at all. I mean, allies. Uh, wounded. When a party member takes damage, they will start to lose health. The health bar next to their portrait will start to decrease. When a party member's health drops low enough, they will gain a wound, and their health bar will turn red. That's happening because she's completely drowning in enemies right now. Wounded characters have their maximum health reduced and receive a penalty to all skills. Wounds are removed when the party rests or when a uh, character levels up. So I, I need to work on that. Let's see, what can I do to defend her? Because I don't think she has a lot of tricks. She does have the Scarlet... Oh, that's poison. She has a self-heal she can do. We also have a party member that could help out right that. Let's see, heals the fate. Oh, that's the other one. Has she, has she already been healing, or does she not actually have a heal? There it is, restoring touch. That's 26% health. Let's use that on our injured party member, Verse. That should hopefully help. I need some more uh, help getting proper attention here, because they're not... Right now, they're not... Re they're not assigning uh, their focus to who I want them to. They're not as interested in my tank as I was as I want them to be. Let's see. If I go for Blood Soak Stone, we can make, get this character to stop responding to us for a bit. They're about to go down though. So instead, let's finish off this character. Let's do, let's do a thrust. Now what happened? Low health on verse. Yeah. Oh. She got knocked out before I could actually do the uh, the attack. I was in the process of trying. I was in the process of trying to heal her, and it didn't work out. Is everyone on attack? So in the future, I need to I need to handle that better. She got completely swarmed. So maybe picking up that taunt would be a good idea because they're clearly not paying attention to to my. Uh, they're clearly completely ignoring my tank right now. And it's not really mattering at all. Look at me, damn it. 
<laughs> By the righteous shedding of blood, we have found our answer. Regrettably, it appears the sage is worthy of leaving our camp alive. The fifth eye offers us a short, mocking bow to Landry. By the custom set forth by the voices of Narat, you are free to go, old man. Br uh, brag to your grandkids that you fell afoul of the chorus, yet lived to tell the story. Let's see. That was fun. Your warriors almost put up a good fight. It really is bloodletting weather, is it not? My conscripts need to, uh, to see more warriors of, of your skill in action. I thank you for the lesson that you have given the camp. I thought I'd die tied to that post. The sage looks down at his rope-worn wrists in disbelief. Now hand me that parchment. I'm certain I can decipher it. Happy times, new party members. We're getting a lot done this episode. Well, much of the parchment was weathered, but I could make out the important parts of the text. The note makes mention of a meeting spot west of, of uh, Tripnettle. Now we've got Tripnettle unlocked on the map. There's a lot going on in this map. So the old sage knows his words after all. I'd ask that you travel ahead and see if you can't get this Captain Florian to yield to the chorus. They will strike a first. Uh, they will strike at first sight of a chorus gang, but perhaps they will parlay if yours is the face they see. I know the area. I suggest we go at once. I'll show you the way. I'm eager to be far from the center of this camp. Something's amiss. There's a lot of fight in you for an old scholar. scholar. Uh, now you're offering to join the expedition. I've met sages every bit as cutthroat as. As hardened gang bosses, they act the part of doddering scribes, but don't let that fool you. Smart for someone your age to be mo so mistrusting, but I'm not with the Oathbreakers. If that's what you're, uh, if that's what you're fishing at, I worked for them under duress, but I've no love for, of them. I'm not about to pledge the chorus, and the disfavored wouldn't have me. Still. I consider myself a Kiros fearing vassal of the Overlord's of the Overlord's Empire all the same. For as long as I've been a sage, I've been trained to defend myself. We don't spend all our time binding books and sketching wildlife, just most of it. For centuries we've been in a quiet war with the School of Tides and the School of Wild Wrath. You can't travel alone as much as I do and not know the Bronze Dance. Oh, they're at war with the School of Tides. Well, we met somebody from the School of Tides earlier, and they seemed to, like... Like, they were voice acted, which makes me suspicious of the idea that they might be a party member at some point. And the fact that, uh... This character's at war with them, like, that just adds another point of friction, which almost makes it more certain that character's gonna join our party at some point. Let's see... So you won't be a parchment wait during the fight, good to know. Oh no! I'd like to think I'm worth like, at least three or four angry peasants in a fight. You're offering to come with me, why? Because the alternative is... what? Living here with these illiterate brutes? My old study is under a river of fire, and there's no family missing me. Besides, I'd much rather chronicle the binder that's twice proclaiming an edict of Kairos. I'd be a fool to let someone else write your story. You want to chronicle me? Well, of course. Even if the burning library is never rebuilt, our work uh, to chronicle the days and events needn't cease. And you're a noteworthy player in this whole war. I can't think of another living fate binder that has been twice given the honor of proclamation. How about you just tell me where it is? Oh, no, no, let's not do that. Swear fealty to me and I will let you leave this place with me. We gained fear with Lantry, just like that, huh? If that is your price, I will pay it. I, Sage Lantry of the School of Ink and Quill, do pledge my services and skine to the, uh, fate, the fate Binder, and by extension, to the Court of Tunon. He dips into a steep bow before rising with a solemn smile. I know I may seem old and frail, but I know how to step lightly and how to not get killed. Really, I won't slow you down. Lead the way, and let me know if I can be of service. Are we done here? Let's hightail it to, trip, to trip Nettle. If your new pet doesn't behave himself along the way, I'm not above clipping his ears. 
There we go. Okay, so thankfully they don't actually kick me out and make me go there immediately, so I can still check around and talk to the other people since I haven't talked to anyone else yet. Uh, let's see. Wow, yeah, it's been a while. I'm gonna make this one episode. I, uh, what's this over here? Whetstone. Uh, don't expect, I don't really expect most episodes to be this long, but in particular, because this is a, a new series, right. I'm trying to escape the... I'm trying to get longer episodes or multiple episodes per day and stuff just to try to escape the beginning of the game because you can spend so much time at this early area of like, meet all these new factions, get all these new quests, and like, we're, we still haven't left the beginning camps yet, so I figured I'd let this one run a little longer, make more progress within that amount of time, and look what we got! We got ourselves four party members. I should really move my, my mage further back. Just anywhere further back, hopefully. That's something, at least. Get our tank in the in the forefront, but have a, a backup melee character coming in, and then these two. It's a really inordinate and strange-looking uh, formation to move in, but it uh, more or less does what I'm trying to do. Sure, why not?